Hi, my name is Dave Rapin. I'm in, in the satellite industry for well over 20 years. And today I'm going to talk about M2M, machine to machine market. I'm going to talk about the nature of the market and the various alternatives using satellite to support M2M communications. When we look at the M2M market, machine to machine, it's useful to first take a look at the applications that we're supporting with M2M communications over satellite. And as you can see, most of the applications are pretty low bandwidth. And really, it's only video surveillance that's going to be a high bandwidth application. Most of the applications are going to be monitoring and control applications, and they consume relatively little amount of bandwidth. When we're talking about M2M, machine to machine, really what we're talking about is an area of communications that's just generally called SCADA. And SCADA really stands, it's an acronym, it stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. And SCADA is just a, a general category of communications where machines are being used to control other machines and to supervise other machines. When we look at SCADA, the principal application for SCADA is really the measurement and control of various systems, particularly remote systems. Um, and our, for communications, particularly for satellite, we can either be providing primary connectivity or in many cases we're actually providing backup cases and that's due to security requirements where it's very important to have very high availability uh, networking for these types of uh, connections. Some secondary applications in the SCADA area is um, security and remote access. Security in the sense of monitoring the integrity of the pipeline, looking for uh, intruders or uh, looking for anybody who's trying to do harm. And then remote access is where technicians come into Maybe it's a pipeline uh, location in the middle of nowhere, and they can use the communications to gain access uh, into corporate headquarters to download documents, uh, inf technical information about the pipeline or whatever the, the, uh, the remote point is. So there's principal applications, and then there's secondary applications that we see uh, with SCADA. When it comes to these SCADA networks, some of the key requirements um, they have to be very highly available. It's no use if the network is not reliable. Geographic recoverage means that these networks need to be able to have very good coverage over a very wide area. And that's because and often times these SCADA applications are deployed in the middle of nowhere. Again, think about a pipeline. That's, that's the classic environment where we're putting in uh, SCADA uh, connectivity to support SCADA applications, pipeline and uh, utility uh, power lines. Then beyond that, some other things uh, such as environmental stability, which means that uh, as these units are out in the middle of nowhere, they're going to have to suffer extreme temperatures and extreme environmental conditions. These units have to be able to have very good and predictable response times uh, or a very good network performance so that if there is a fault, the response can be delivered in a very consistent and timely fashion. And then finally, economically, these SCADA solutions, obviously, much like everything else, needs to be uh, cost effective. An area in M2M and, and, and SCADA networking, which has gained a lot of uh, interest and activity lately is the smart grid. And smart grid is where utility companies are upgrading their distribution infrastructure so that the infrastructure is two-way and they can actually query various distribution points in the network. And as you can see, in terms of the distribution points, it goes from um, the substations to uh, distribution to uh, collectors on down into the home and at every one of these points in the smart grid it's a two-way communications device. This 
obviously creates opportunities for satellite to provide connectivity solutions. Uh, and some of the obvious areas are at the substation where there's um, a relatively higher amount of data requirement, as well as um, in the collectors, uh, which are collecting the smart meter information from the homes. Generally speaking, I think what we're going to see in the homes with the smart meters are going to be terrestrial wireless devices that are meshed together using unlicensed band. These are very low-cost devices. So I, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of satellite devices in the home, but higher up in the network, I think that we'll see some significant opportunities to deploy satellite-based communication devices to aid in the development of the smart grid. Looking a little more closely at the smart grid environment, um, you know, it's worthwhile to take a look at the far end of the smart grid, the home and uh, at the uh, collector point. If, if you look at the, the traffic from the home into the collector point, it's relatively low bandwidth. It's up to uh, 100 kilobits um, moment, you know, moment to moment as needed. Whereas if you look at the connectivity requirement from the AMI collector into the network, it's going to be 200 to 400 kilobits. So it's more, it's more bandwidth. In terms of the technologies that we're going to see deployed, as I said before, I, I don't think it's going to be so much satellite based in the home because we can implement uh, mesh terrestrial technologies using unlicensed bands very cost effectively. Alternatively, we can use uh, 2.5G, 3G, 4G networks fairly cost effectively. The AMI collectors, particularly in rural areas, this presents some opportunity for satellite, whether it's an MSS-based service or an FSS-based service, which I'll explain shortly. Uh, if these collector devices are in relatively rural areas where we don't have a good terrestrial solution, then satellite presents an opportunity. So I'm talking about M2M, machine-to-machine -machine communications using satellite, but before I drill down into what satellite solutions are for M2M, it's probably worth just considering where satellite exists within the range of uh, M2M backhaul solutions. So the possibilities start with uh, unlicensed band uh, terrestrial communications. You know, low cost devices as with the uh, device, devices in the home that can be meshed together, um, that's pretty cost effective. It's probably also questionable quality. Um, you can also use microwave, point to multi-point microwave, higher quality, higher cost. Issues with uh, terrain and also you have to get a, a licensed band. Uh, the cellular infrastructure, 3G, soon to be 4G, that provides very good possibilities for connecting M2M devices, but those are going to do well in urban areas. Further out in rural areas, communications is going to get a little more difficult using 3G and 4G. And then finally, good old uh, T1s, E1s, MPLS, those are going to be very expensive uh, and uh, may have some issues with availability as well in rural areas. And that brings us to satellite. With satellite, there's a possibility for MSS or mobile satellite system uh, or FSS or fixed satellite systems or otherwise known as, as VSATs. Those systems have the ability to provide connectivity anywhere under a satellite footprint. And that's the real value of satellite. So with uh, satellite supporting M2N machine to machine communications, there's really going to be two kinds of uh, satellite systems that you can use. You can use uh, an, an L band or S band system, which is a frequency band that belongs to a category of satellite systems called mobile satellite systems. 
Um, think of uh, Global Star, Soraya, Inmarsat. That's one possibility. The other possibility is using VSAT, C band, KU band, KA band, and those belong to uh, a, a category of satellite communications called FSS, fixed satellite systems. With the L band or the, the MSS systems, um, and actually with either, there's pros and cons. With, with the L band systems, S band systems, these systems operate at a frequency band which enables the use of omnidirectional antennas, very small omnidirectional antennas. And thus, they're, they're very simple to install. We don't have to point a special antenna. And, and the antenna is very, very small, so it's very compact. And they generally consume very low amounts of power, which makes it convenient to connect these to a battery or to a solar panel. On the other hand, the downside of these MSS-based systems is that the nature of the frequency allocation to these satellite systems is that they don't get a lot of spectrum. And what that results in is a relatively high cost per bit. So uh, in other words, it's going to be expensive to use these L-band MSS uh, systems when we're trying to transmit a lot of data. Um, in addition, generally, these systems will be limited to 400 kilobits or so. And, but that's okay for most M2M applications. So the major negative on these uh, L-band, S-band MSS systems for M2M is going to is going to be the cost of the usage if we're really consuming a lot of bandwidth. Alternatively, you look at uh, VSAT, the, the pluses are um, the, the cost of the bandwidth is, is much less. In fact, we can typically provide a flat rate service, which is relatively independent of the amount of capacity used. Uh, in addition, uh, VSATs are able to deliver quite a bit of capacity on an as-needed basis. So that would be really good for things like uh, remote video surveillance. Uh, in addition, VSAT enables the establishment of, of private networks, whereas the MSS-based systems are, are really using a, a, a public network with standard service plans. The downside of VSAT is that antenna is pretty big. It's going to be maybe 0.7 meter, maybe 1 meter, maybe 1.2 meter. That's a fairly good size antenna and that's going to drive the cost of the installation higher. It's going to mean a higher capex and generally these systems are going to consume more power in, in remote locations where you're driving off solar. It's going to mean more solar panels and that's going to increase capex. So MSS services for M2M, MSS mobile satellite systems, um, these are delivered through a network. And um, you know, it, again, the, the kind of providers are people like Iridium, uh, Inmarsat, Globalstar, Thuraya. These are companies that have launched MSS satellites and have established uh, a network um, that uh, M2M users can use uh, and really what you're doing is you're just going through their network much as you would the internet. The issue being again that it's going to be usage based billing. So generally at the end of every month these service providers are going to be sending out a bill based on, on how many kilobytes and megabytes have been consumed by the users. and uh, if, if it's a large volume of data, this could get quite costly. But again, with uh, MSS systems, mobile satellite systems, operating in the, the L band and the S band frequencies, which are fairly low, 1.5, 2 gigahertz or so, these systems use antennas that uh, are not um, highly parabolic. Um, they don't have to be ideally pointed. They're fairly small. And as you can see, what this means is that these stations are, are very compact and we can uh, install them with a very small footprint and in the case of this uh, tsunami monitoring photo here you can see we've got some solar panels it's not a lot of solar panels to power these units so these are, are units that are very easy to deploy from an installation perspective 
and very economical to operate from a power supply uh, perspective when we're off the grid. So we've uh, quite successfully used them in a range of remote monitoring and, and sensing applications from tsunami warning, pipeline, utility monitoring, uh, and the like. Establishing VSAT connectivity for an M2M application uh, really means that we can uh, more easily develop private networks because this is, generally aren't part of a large-scale uh, cloud. Uh, oftentimes, um, the VSAT can be the VSAT network can be quite small. We can establish a hub for as few as 10 or, or 20 remote stations. So this means that we can establish private networking in support of the M2M uh, connectivity. This also means that we can custom design the service plans, the QoS, the quality of service, as well as the SLA or service level agreements that we're gonna provide the, the end user. And as I mentioned before, VSAT really does well for M2M where uh, there's a relatively large amount of volume of data that's being transferred over the, the satellite um, and VSAT services are going to make this uh, higher capacity more economical.